create whatever account or whatever blog I want and just make stuff up and people read it and go, oh, well, that person obviously knows what's going on because I distrust this organization. The biggest thing that we do probably every year is, um, which obviously is, is timely, uh, is our outbreak our operation outbreak we decided to do this and it was based on actually i think it might have been your class grace that it was really we were studying government at the time and when ebola hit in 2014-15 we had a lot of questions and a lot of people asking things and I, you know we got to the point where it's like you know what let's let's integrate what we're learning into this and figure out what we can do and how to do it and then let's escalate it by now creating an outbreak on our own campus and seeing how that goes but now we're living it, you know, and I remember we talking about us talking about this. It's a hundred year cycle, it's coming, uh, and now we're here. So um, I've been to the outbreak. Well, I did it. I actually participated in it seventh grade and then eighth grade. And then I visited a few times after that. But I remember like when all the stuff started happening with the coronavirus and we were hearing like rumors in the beginning and then it started getting more serious. And then like the government started taking it seriously. It was so crazy to see how the stuff, some of the things that we had done were like playing out for real. Cause like, so my seventh grade year, I was the vice president, like for the government section and the balance of all the different groups that are in power to try and keep the people that like really don't have all the information that other groups have at bay and like, let them still feel like they have freedom, but make sure that the virus is not spreading rampantly is a very hard balance because like, you know, that the epidemiologists and all the people that are working to stop the virus realize that we need to get rid of a lot of stuff to stop it, but then people don't want to lose their freedoms in the process. I was a part of the media team in my eighth grade year when we had it in the late school year. And it was really interesting to see how in us, in our simulation, the media tried to get accurate information out there, but it was difficult for them to get the information because it seemed like they were last on the totem pole. But then coming back this year to visit, it was completely different because there was some citizens taking the news into their own hands and spreading the falsified information like in Contagion. As time goes on, it gets confusing and it's a lot more difficult for the media to actually get the truth out there to the people. A very interesting thing I noticed my year was Everyone was trying to like fight the virus together, but everyone sort of had their own idea on how to do it. So because everyone thought they knew best, no one listened to each other, which caused a lot of chaos. It was sort of I'm noticing now in real life, everyone thinks they know what's the best way to handle this thing. But in reality, you should be trying to work together in order to combat this thing, but it's not happening, which causes disruption and stuff like that. That's something I noticed that I thought was very interesting. Something that I noticed was that communication was like really key for chaos to not really spread around as much I guess you can say and I just I feel like it was something that shows how we all really like need each other especially in these times and like Bradford said um, people really tend to like have like their own different ideas and think that oh my way is best and um, that it's just really important that we all stick together during these times and um, like try and communicate together to solve the problem and get it over it. Um, I remember last year, like Donna was saying about chaos, last year was really chaotic. Not last year when I visited, I mean my eighth grade year when I did it, that was really chaotic because nobody would really trust each other. Everybody was just like running away and like going against each other. But when I visited my ninth grade year, it was a lot more organized and I feel like people got along better. That's how we should be now instead of getting all worked up about the COVID-19, we should be more calm about it. Maybe that'll help the situation. Yeah, you know, it's funny, The Dr. Sabetti and Dr. Kalubri and, and some other people, Molly and stuff, that are on our team that, you know, that, that are part of the outbreak team that developed this, we talk about it all the time and we see things that happen right now and go, oh, you know, we did that in seventh grade. Human behavior is human behavior. Just because you're older or just because you have more knowledge, you would think that something would change. But, you know, when it comes down to it, 
you know, and it, and it goes back into Inspire with Dr. Zimbardo, just because I had him on my head when we were talking. You know, we talked about it, right? You have the powerful and the powerless. They'll do an awful lot of things to go from powerless to powerful, whether that's lying, spreading misinformation, not trusting people, doing whatever they think they're going to do and they don't care what anybody thinks. You know, and it also goes into the f- effect, and we talked about this in a meeting the other day, you know, social media and the internet is the killer of expertise because now, whereas before, the only way to have a valid opinion on a topic as a citizen, I would have to write a letter or something like that and send it into a magazine or a newspaper or a TV station. And believe it or not, it would have to be, you know, I would have to be literate. I would have to be you know, coherent and I would have to actually provide evidence that is traceable and understandable. And people would vet that before they even put it on the air in a newspaper. Now, I can create whatever account or whatever blog I want and just make stuff up and people read it and go, oh, well, that person obviously knows what's going on because I distrust this organization. Before you know it, it's so hard for the media or the government. You have to take time away from what you're supposed to do to try to put out fires that other people have created. And that, you know, that spreads you thin and it just waters down everything. So, you know, we, we have some really interesting stuff coming up once we get through this whole pandemic with the, uh, with the outbreak situation. What we've built that'll be out by June and then the next version in August, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. I, I just, I'm so blown away with who is involved and stuff. So, you know, we'll always keep continuing to put out new iterations that are better and better and more experiential. So then you can take that stuff. And I'm sure I'm hoping that almost all of you have at some point in this real pandemic gone, I can't believe you're believing this when this is actually what you should be looking at, you know, things that you can take from school uh, or lessons that really have that impact in life. So it's good that uh, you're remembering that. That's so important.